If you grow corn, Bt corn, and you turn it into high fructose corn syrup, and people go down the street drinking lots of this fructose, they gain a lot of weight. And they gain a lot of weight, and then the pancreas starts dysfunctioning, and pretty soon you've got diabetic conditions on a major part of our population, which fills up the hospitals and the clinics and the drug therapy. So that thing is working to take care of something that the root cause is a faulty food system, is mistakes in monoculture agriculture. And the lack of the system is not an effective system for growing health. It's a good system if you want to make profit on it by skimming the resources off the work of a whole lot of machines in huge monocultures rather than gardens that you'd walk through that you'd love to have your kids grow up in and that there are fruits and vegetables and flowers and fragrances and herbs and, and stuff you've never seen and stuff you didn't know about and, and that the birds come and may land on your shoulder and, and you see all sorts of pollinators that are native to the system that you're living in and they are beginning to increase in numbers and they're health is coming back so you have a, a system that will convey uh, a world that you'd like to have your children grow up in, that you'd like to have a world that would make sense. Bringing the people behind our food to life. From a scientific perspective, what's wrong with monoculture? What's wrong with production agriculture? In some ways that's like saying what's wrong with evolution? because we as a species and an organism are constantly adapted to uh, the circumstances and the conditions of many variables that uh, impact how we behave. So we have a lot of relic behaviors, family behaviors, uh, experiential stuff that gets in the way of uh, some of maybe a more integral view, a more complete view. Uh, some of those us realize that if we sit here on the earth, we know that there's a whole substratum of soil here filled with microorganisms and filled with another level we don't see. And then there's another level beyond the atmosphere where we are in a solar system with a sun and planets. So there's a three level view. It's from here, from here to there. Now that's a view that takes on more uh, reality if we're going to deal with issues. So now we deal with monoculture. So what does monoculture mean? It means one culture means I'm going to grow only wheat in this field. Okay, what's the history of this field before we plant just wheat in this field? By the way, how to get just wheat in this field means you got to kill everything else. So you got to kill everything else. That is its own trip. But now you're going to plant wheat and only get nothing but wheat. Oh, by the way, which wheat are you going to get? Because there are many triticums, right? There's, there's uh, all the old species of triticum. And then there's the modern tetraploid wheat, which has three different genomes in it. So you could have tr uh, uh, triticum estivum, uh, uh, hard red uh, summer, spring summer wheat, right? That good bread wheat with 13% protein and uh, uh, makes good whole wheat bread, right? That, but that's only one of a thousands of kinds of wheat. So in your monoculture already, out of the whole field of all the different kinds of wheats, you've picked one to make your monoculture out of. So it's not just a monoculture, it's a monoculture from a plurality that's now being dissolved, decisions are being made about the plurality when you choose only one. And of course, you killed off everything in the field also. So that is why, that's not, you know, the answer to this is maybe, uh, is a monoculture good or bad? It's not that issue. The issue is, what does it mean in, uh, in the way we run our lives to take a piece of the earth and only grow one thing and kill everything else off. What does that mean? What, is, what kind of a, a approach is that to having, uh, let's say, a universal biology, a respect for life in its very essence, and an understanding that every piece of ground has a lot of possibilities, a lot of potentialities. And so we've taken something which has an immense amount of potentialities and we've reduced it to a simplistic solution that we're now going to put on a commodity market. What is the connection to biodiversity? Okay, so you ask the question. Yeah. When, you, when you say, a good question, okay, you have a monoculture. What was here before then? The minute you look what's before then, you realize there was some biodiversity there. Not only the voles, and the, and the gophers, and the mice, and the slugs, and the snails, and the, uh, the critters that live in the ground, but also 
the little flowers uh, like uh, of a violet, which, which is, uh, whose leaves are eaten by a caterpillar. Uh, and that caterpillar molts and turns into a little butterfly. And that little butterfly goes and pollinates the milkweed plants. So the milkweed plants grow up, but there's a violet, and this thing's living on the violet, but it does pollinate this other plant. And the leaves of that are what the swallowtail butterfly lives on. So when that little pollinator's gone, the, the, the swallowtails are gone too. Because there's no thing to propagate the milkweed. And so the web of life is what we're talking about, that, that this remarkable issue of pollinators, of natural systems that are sustainable through billions of years of development and endless, countless generations, that is, is really where uh, we have come to recognize that monocultures have eliminated not just the plants, but all the pollinators and all the subsidiaries and all the creatures that are this web of organisms that is life. And that that has, uh, a, that's an issue.